Good morning, Team Nash. Welcome to today's video. Happy Wednesday. And today, I got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about Twitter actually coming under fire from the Department of Justice. The whole whistleblower thing that we talked about yesterday was just the precursor for the shit that Twitter is in right now. A lot to cover there. Also, Tesla's stock split, 3 to 1, is actually becoming effective today. We're going to talk about the implications in just a second. Also, Bad Bath & Beyond seem to have secured a lifeline. Let's discuss that. And some concerning numbers coming out from the housing market that we absolutely cannot ignore. All of that is coming up in a second. But first, I have to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Morning Brew. But more on that after the intro. Let's hit it. Now, before we continue, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Morning Brew. Guys, I got to be honest with you. It's that good. I've actually been a subscriber of theirs for months. And when they reached out to me and said, hey, can we work together? I was absolutely pumped to do it. Look, you all know I'm not a morning person. And before my morning coffee, I'm not a very nice guy. And one thing I always hated about my mornings before Morning Brew is this aimless browsing on my phone of dry and boring financial information. Now, financial media isn't really good at making these things interesting. That's why my channel exists. So I had to do it. I had to catch up, but it was absolutely a chore. It was excruciating. Now, I start my mornings with Morning Brew, a free, absolutely free daily newsletter that's delivered to you Monday through Sunday and gets you up to speed on business, finance, tech in just five minutes. And it's actually interesting, witty, and informative. And it is totally free. So there's no reasons not to subscribe to this thing. Now, look, if you're interested in business, finance, or tech, it's simple. Morning Brew is a no-brainer. And it takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. So do me a favor. Before we continue, pause this video. Go right now and sign up for free by using the link in the description or by going to www.morningbrewdaily.com slash Tom Nash. Sign up. Thank me later. And let's go back to the video. So first of all, let's start with Twitter because this story is just insane and it keeps getting crazier. So if you thought things could not get worse for Twitter after yesterday, well, I got a surprise for you. It just did. And whoo! Twitter is in deep shit. They're about to turn into a piñata by a bunch of politicians and the Department of Justice. So yesterday, in case you missed this, in case you're living under a rock, the former head of security of Twitter came out and said, hey, I'm aware of actual fraud that's happening inside Twitter, or at least it happened when I was there, as far as misleading intentionally the board of directors as far as misleading intentionally regulators and potentially misleading Elon Musk about what's going on with the company, with privacy information, with bots, with this whole shebang. But now we have some heavy hitters actually lining up to take some shots at Twitter. And those are not some suckers. This isn't some PR nightmare. This is the real deal. We have on the one side the Department of Justice probing into Twitter. On the other hand, some heavy hitter politicians trying to use this as leverage to get some free political clout. So Twitter is about to become a hot potato slash football slash piñata and they're in deep shit. Now, here's why I sit here because I think that this is pretty insane. So Elon Musk actually was thought to be the village idiot because when he pulled out of the deal, having signed the deal and having absolutely waived the diligence, everybody kept saying, well, Elon is going to lose this case. This case is absolutely stupid, blah, 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 blah. But now a few days into this thing, it doesn't look so stupid after all. Again, every time people bet against Elon, they seem to lose every freaking time. So now let me explain to you what just happened. Elon just sold a whole bunch of Tesla stock to prepare for the Twitter acquisition, absolutely not taking any damage on the share price of Tesla while doing a 3 to 1 stock split, which actually kept the share price high. So he got rid of a lot of shares, took in billions of dollars, and surprise, surprise, he's not only not buying Twitter, now it seems that he's not going to pay a significant fine. Now it's going to seem that he uncovered a lot of corruption within Twitter. Now it seems that all these criminals that cause this are actually going to go to prison. So Elon uncovered some issues at Twitter, let's call them issues, that will send people to prison, actually backed out of the deal with what seems to be right now a minimal price. Enforcement at this point seems very, very shaky with everything we know. And he actually took in a few billion home from Tesla stock without actually hurting the share price. 
doesn't seem so stupid after all. And that's not even the craziest part of this whole story because Twitter's own response is absolutely mind-blowing. So Twitter came out yesterday and get this, the response was that these allegations by this former head of security whistleblower lack context. They didn't say it's false. They didn't say it's absolute nonsense. They said it lacks context context. This is literally like a guy who gets caught cheating. His wife walks into the house. He's there with another chick in her bed. And he says, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. Is this the best thing they came up with? It's not what it looks like. Whoo! this sounds guilty as fuck. But let's see what happens to Twitter. Let's move on to Tesla. So Tesla has a stock split. It actually is becoming effective today. At the end of the day, a three to one stock split. Now, obviously a stock split on its own on the surface means nothing for the fundamentals. Nothing is really happening. So it shouldn't change the share price. It's just for convenience, right? Well, not exactly, because here's what happened here. While we talked yesterday about AMC's retail play, this is what an actual retail play looks like. Now I'm not condoning one or the other. I'm just saying that if you actually want to do it, this is the right way. But for that, you have to have a viable business and an expensive share that you actually can split. So what Tesla is doing here, they're basically turning a $900 share to a $300 share. Why? Because for options players, that's a huge deal. With options, you need 100 contracts minimum to actually get into the deal. And when the stock price is $900 per share and you need 100, a lot of people from the retail investment community just can't afford that. Now, by lowering the threshold to 300 pop times 100, you're basically opening up the options game to a lot more retail traders. Obviously, institutional investors don't give a shit. It's absolutely irrelevant. It's a pure retail play, but it's not marketed as such. Now, here's the story here. And again, I'm not going to take sides if it's good or bad. I'm not a huge fan of this whole retail place, but here's what I think is going on here. Elon is basically saying, I want more retail participation in one of the more heavily retail participated stocks in the market. May I just remind you that Tesla has 65% retail participation, but Tesla has actually broken the mold here because with every single stock out there, the one thing I can tell you from my experience that high retail participation usually means bad news for the stock. It means more volatility, more shakiness, absolute pandemonium, just insanity. Stability is what you get with institutional investors. And with Tesla at 65% retail, it just seems like a bad idea. But for every other stock in history, that's exactly what happened until Tesla. Because Tesla somehow did the impossible. It created a retail-based community that actually behaves like institutional investors. They don't budge. They have high convictions. They only buy the dips. And they absolutely cannot be swayed. People like Rob Maurer, people like Dave Lee, people like Steve Market Ryan, Market Ryan, let's just give it Steve. You know what? Steve Market Ryan from Solving the Money Problem. It's just a few examples. Far as out, my friend, there's a lot of people. Now you know, there's a lot of people who cover Tesla, who create this amazing community that creates a free flowing information, good or bad, that allows retail investors to actually not get flooded out of the stock if bad news gets flooded in mainstream media. So Tesla, by increasing retail participation, is probably the only stock where I would tell you that I don't think it's a bad idea. Usually, more retail in the stock means bad things to come. It's just not a good sign, unless it's Tesla. And that's exactly what I said in my yesterday's video. I was talking about how AMC is doing a pure retail play and how it's a bad idea, except Tesla. Go back in my video and watch this. And now, I'm going to say the same thing. In case you haven't noticed, I actually have a lot of faith in Tesla's retail community. So I absolutely think that expanding it into more players is not necessarily a bad idea as long as it's Tesla. Any other stock? Ooh, it's a little bit shaky. And what I find amusing about Tesla is mostly the people who keep claiming it's a fraud even in 2022. They seem to ignore the millions of frauds you know, driving on the roads, the 35,000 frauds that are charging, the frauds that are driving on the road. The, Countless advancements they've done in batteries, in software. They're basically leading the industry in manufacturing. They have factories in the USA, Germany, and China. And somehow, people seem to have the audacity to still call this shit a fraud. At some point, you all have to get off your high horse and just admit it that you fucked up. And now let's talk about Bad Bath & Beyond. So this morning, the stock is up 15%. Why? Because they've said they've secured a loan. How much of a loan? Which conditions? We don't know jack shit, but we know they've secured the loan. They said they're looking for three, 400 million. 
Okay, so is this justified? Is this the end of BBB, 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 wise problems? I don't know how many Bs this shit has. I got stuck. I was like, this should be a meme. Anyways, so is this the end of Bad Bath & Beyond's issues? Well, not exactly, because look, you have to understand, we don't know nothing about this loan. We don't know how serious that is, what's the amount, but we do know one other thing, that they already have $5 billion of loans on the books. So adding another half a billion is probably not a good idea, especially when you don't have the cash to repay it, you don't have the cash flow to generate more cash, your business is in shambles, your industry is going nowhere, it's a brick and mortar business is absolutely falling apart. What is this loan going to do for a business that can't generate cash flow or margins? I mean, what's the point? The only person... I think, to have made money from Bad Bath & Beyond, except from a few traders, is just Ryan Cohen. Except from Ryan Cohen, who turned a seven-month holding to a $60 million profit, I mean, nobody else is ever going to make money. In fact, I'm curious which institution thinks it's a good idea to give $400 million to Bad Bath & Beyond. I'm absolutely going to call it right here. Bad Bath & Beyond is done. It's toast. Put a fork in it. It's absolutely done. This is nothing but a simple boop before it actually goes and obviously, we have to talk about the housing crash. So news are coming out that existing home sales are down 20% on a six-month basis. But even worse than that, June to July shows a 6% drop on a single month. Now, what's going on here? Well, first of all, obviously, interest rates are going up. When you had 0% interest, it was pretty much free money. You take as many loans as you can. You put it in real estate, the prices keep going up, you're just literally printing money. But as the Fed becomes more hawkish and interest rates become higher and higher, your margin is closing up until the point where it's literally is non-existent. Right now, we went from 3.3% at the end of last year to 5.7-5.8% right now. So at almost 6% interest, it's very hard to make money in the real estate market that is actually in decline. So a lot of people are pulling back, making the decline even worse, making the margin even smaller. So right now, it just seems that the market is correcting. But allow me to add a little bit more FUD into this equation. Now, the real estate market, as far as you look at it right now, is still nowhere close to where it's going to be in about 6 to 12 months because it's a lagging indicator. That is the last thing that will go because the first thing that goes in the recession is discretionary spending. Now, discretionary spending goes down, retail suffers, retail suffers, layoffs. People have even less available income. They spend less. It's a vicious cycle. The first thing people start to default on is credit card debt, then car loans. Eventually, at the end, at the absolute end, it's just down to your home. That's the last thing you default on is homes. So by the time we're actually going to see some defaults on the real estate market, it's probably six to 12 months away. So as far as the real estate market, it's nowhere near to the point of catastrophe that it can be at, but I'm going to surprise you right here. I don't think it's going to go to catastrophe mode. I think we're due for a correction in the real estate market. I think we're headed to a more balanced market, but are we headed to a full-blown crash? I do not think so. I can't see it happening. I definitely see a pullback to a more reasonable pricing level, but I don't see a complete crash. The market is completely different than it was in 2008. The checks and balances in place, the collateral, the way the banks and the regulators behave, it's not going to happen this time, but the pullback is definitely in the cards. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Morning Brew. The link is below. Go sign up right now. It's free, free. Every morning you get some interesting, cool stuff on your desktop, on your phone. Check it out. See you in the next video.